on in Germany right now? Are people going to freeze this winter? Are my friends and family okay? A lot of you have asked me about the current situation in Germany, so let's talk about it. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Feli. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. And in the last few weeks and months, a lot of my friends and family members have said things like, you're lucky you don't have to deal with rising energy prices right now. Because as most of you probably know, Germany is in the middle of a major energy crisis. Now, I'm not an expert in this field in any way, but I am staying up to date on the current developments in Germany, and I'm in touch with my friends and family over there, of course. I mean, this affects my parents, my brother, as well as my extended family, aunts, uncles, cousins, and also my friends who are in their mid to late 20s and don't necessarily have huge savings for situations like these. So I'm gonna try to give you guys an overview of what's going on, and I'd like to talk about four things today. The reasons for the crisis, the consequences it has for the people in Germany right now, the measures that are being taken to fight this, and last but not least, the future predictions as to how this is going to play out long term. And just a quick disclaimer, it might happen that I say we when talking about Germany or German residents, even though I myself don't actually live in Germany right now, but that's just kind of hard to get rid of. I'll always feel German, I think. So we equals people in Germany in this video. First, I think we need to define what kind of crisis we're even dealing with. And I think we can break this down into four categories. And those are natural gas, electricity, fuel and general inflation. Now, of course, these aren't exclusively German issues, especially inflation is a worldwide phenomenon right now. But in Germany, it's just at an extreme level. So let's start with the main topic, if you will, natural gas. Germany is experiencing both a shortage of natural gas as well as rising prices. But why is that? To answer that, we have to go back a few decades to the 1970s when Germany signed the first contracts with the Soviet Union to buy natural gas and crude oil from them. The Soviet Union and then later Russia quickly became Germany's biggest supplier for natural gas. And before this crisis, we were getting about 55% of our gas supply from Russia, followed by about 31% from Norway and 13% from the Netherlands. In 2011, this became even easier with the opening of the gas pipeline Nord Stream 1 that brought the gas directly from Russia to Germany through the Baltic Sea. And we even built a second pipeline called Nord Stream 2 that was completed in 2021, but it was met with a lot of resistance within Germany and worldwide and hasn't actually been used to this day. So Germany has put itself into a situation where it was heavily dependent on Russia for its needs of natural gas, which is used for heating, to create electricity and also as a raw material in several industries. Now, gas prices had already started to go up in the fall of 2021. Reasons for this were that the economy was finally opening back up, which led to really high demands that the suppliers couldn't meet that quickly. And Russia was slowly lowering their gas supply to Europe at this time and didn't fully fill up the gas storage facilities in Europe, which in retrospect may have been part of a long term strategy, but that's not been proven. Then Russia started its invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, which the European Union and other Western countries reacted to with sanctions targeting individuals, banks, businesses, monetary exchanges, as well as exports and imports, among other things. In response to that, Russia interrupted or decreased their gas supply to Germany repeatedly in the following months, which they would explain with maintenance issues. But many people believe that it was actually a strategic move. Then at the end of August, they eventually cut off the gas supply completely. And after first statements about technical issues again, they then added that they wouldn't be able to make any repairs until the sanctions have been revoked which Western countries collectively interpreted as blackmailing, basically. Shortly after this, there were several explosions that caused gas leaks on both the Nord Stream 1 and the Nord Stream 2 pipelines, which has made them unusable for now. It's not clear who's responsible for the damage, but experts are convinced that it was intentional sabotage. So that 55% of Germany's gas supply is missing right now. And as we all know, a high demand and a low supply means that prices go up. 
And that's exactly what's happening in Germany. In addition to the short supply, other factors that are contributing to the high gas prices are that gas providers don't have a lot of rivals in Germany and can therefore raise the prices even more and Germany has a carbon tax since 2021 that also adds to the price. Now, since gas is also used to create electricity in Germany, electricity prices have gone up as well. It really only makes up about 10 to 15 percent of Germany's total electricity, which seems like a relatively small number. But because of how electricity pricing works in the EU, it has a big effect. According to the so-called merit order, cheapest electricity sources will be used first to fill up the needed amount of electricity. And gas is usually the last source that is used. But the rule is that the price of the last source sets the price for all of it, which makes the entire electricity price go up with the gas price. Unlike with gas, this doesn't mean that Germany has a shortage of electricity, though. It's simply more expensive right now. This graphic from the German YouTube channel Mr. Wissen to Go helps understand this even better. Say that on any given day, the electricity demand is met by using 55% renewable energy, which is relatively cheap, 10% nuclear energy, also cheap and 20% coal energy, which has gotten more expensive, but there's still 15% missing that will be gained from gas, which is a relatively simple process, but expensive right now. And this last price will set the price for all of it. And regarding the coal, about half of Germany's coal supply used to come from Russia as well. But in August, the entire EU passed a coal embargo on Russian coal. So this part of our energy source has been affected as well. The good news is that there is enough coal available on the world markets, so there's no shortage. But you guessed it, the price for coal has gone up as well. Another product that has been getting more expensive in many countries is fuel, so gasoline and diesel. This has to do with crude oil, for which Russia is a major supplier as well. Before the war, Germany got about one third of their crude oil from Russia. Now it's only about half of that. And the EU is even planning on placing an oil embargo on Russian oil. As a result of all of this, the international oil prices have gone up a lot as well. What's interesting, though, is that it's not at all at a historical high. In 2012, the oil price was actually much higher, but fuel was still cheaper than it is now. So there have to be a few more reasons than just the oil price. One of those is that refineries lowered their production throughout the pandemic, and they're not all back to their usual capacities yet, which means that the supply is lower. Gas companies are also simply raising the prices to make much more profit than usual, including Shell and BP, that both have made record profits this year. And the fuel price is also affected by inflation which we'll talk more about in a second. And in Germany, a major factor here is that the currency that crude oil is sold in is the US dollar, which has become extremely strong compared to the euro this year, which makes it more expensive for euro countries. The last big part of the crisis is, as I just mentioned, inflation, which is a worldwide issue, not just a German one, but it is particularly bad in Germany with an inflation rate of about 10%. For context, 2% is considered normal. In the US, it's currently at about 7%. Now, inflation is an extremely complex phenomenon that's influenced by a lot of different factors. But some of the main contributing factors are, of course, the war in Ukraine, which led to these interruptions of the gas and oil supply but also resulted in a low supply of raw materials, crops from Ukraine, for example, which led to an increase in food prices, among others. And then there's still a hangover from the pandemic, kind of like what I just explained about the fuel industry. The economy has opened back up and there is a high demand on the markets, but a lot of the industries aren't back to their pre-COVID conditions yet. A lot of materials and products still have big shortages and delays, such as construction materials or computer chips. And it doesn't help that China, the worldwide largest exporter of goods, keeps going into lockdowns. The main way that this is affecting people in Germany is, of course, through their wallets. It affects utility bills of private households and businesses, industries that use oil and gas as a raw material, and as a result of inflation, pretty much every other part of life, with the most essential being food. According to the German Federal Office of Statistics, the consumer prices for energy have gone up by 43% compared to the previous year and 20% for food. One topic in particular that many people in Germany are dealing with right now are their utility Nachzahlungen, additional payments, as well as their new 
Abschlagszahlungen, their monthly payment rate. For context, in Germany, you usually pay your utilities based on a fixed monthly rate that your provider determines based on your previous usage or for new customers based on an estimate for your household size. And they don't look at your actual usage until the end of the year and then you either get money back if your usage was less than expected or you have to pay extra if it was more kind of similar to how a tax return works in the US. And currently, countless people are getting bills from their providers quoting an extra several hundred euros. And I've even seen people post about up to 2000 euros. And their monthly payments for the next year are going up accordingly as well. Especially right now, going into the cold season, this is putting a lot of stress on people. Not everyone can afford this. Many households are afraid of their services being cut off if they can't pay. And even those who can afford the higher prices for now are worried about the future. Nobody really knows how this is going to play out in the long run. The good news is that Germany is traditionally a country of savers, which means that many have at least a little bit of savings that help them in the short run. And the German and European governments are working on ways to counter these price increases. But I'll get more into that in the next point. One thing that's important to keep in mind is that about half of German households have a gas-based heating system, for which consumers currently pay about 19 cents per kilowatt hour of natural gas, compared to about five cents at the beginning of 2021, which means that it's about four times as high as before the crisis. And the price has already gone down drastically in the past couple of months. At its peak in August, European gas prices were 10 times higher than in August of 2021. Here in the US, natural gas prices have gone up as well throughout 2022, but not nearly as much. Looking at electricity prices, they're currently at about 43 cents per kilowatt hour compared to 32 cents in 2021, and people have to make additional payments here as well. Another few hundred euros for many, and the bills for next year are going up drastically. In the US, electricity currently costs about 17 cents per kilowatt hour, which is what I'm paying as well, so less than half of the German price. And gas and electricity prices aren't only affecting private households, but businesses as well. I've come across a lot of articles about bakeries, for example, that are struggling with the insanely high utility costs, which is leading to shorter hours and even closings. A lot of them use gas ovens, and ingredients such as butter, flour, and yeast have become more expensive as well. This local bakery chain in Hannover suddenly has bills over 1.1 million euros instead of the normal 120,000. And this family-run butcher business is supposed to pay an additional 30,000, which they simply can't afford. Other industries that are heavily affected by this are the chemical industry, where gas is also used as a raw material, as well as metal and paper production. But as I said, prices in Germany have already started to go back down and reasons for that are that they had relatively mild temperatures this fall and the German gas storage facilities have now been fully filled up. Hypothetically, these reserves would get Germany through about two cold winter months. It also helps that other European countries have been able to fill their storage up as well. Spain is even in a position where their storage facilities are completely filled up, but they're still getting new LNG shipments, liquefied natural gas, that is sent to Europe via ships, mainly from the US. Last but not least, fuel prices went up like crazy too, of course, and about 83% of German households have at least one car. In March of 2022, the gasoline price was at an average of two euros 15 per liter. Currently, it averages at about two euros per liter, which equals about seven euros 50 per gallon. In the US, the national average right now is at three euros 90 per gallon, but fuel has actually always been more expensive in Germany. And one other notable effect that all of this had in Germany was that back in the spring, cooking oil suddenly became the new toilet paper in German supermarkets. It was sold out everywhere. Now let's talk about what German residents and the government are doing in response to the crisis. First and foremost, many people in Germany are trying to reduce their gas and energy usage as much as possible, which of course has financial motivations to save money. But from what I've seen, experienced and heard about it, it also has intrinsic motivations to collectively save energy and make sure that there's enough gas left to get through the winter. My parents have started to turn off the warm water throughout the day, for example, and only turn it on 
on in the mornings and evenings to take showers. And a friend of mine even told me that in her apartment, she just keeps the heat in her bedroom off completely and only heats the kitchen and the living room a little bit, but not even all the way. And she'll just use blankets and thick clothes when she's alone and only turns the heat up when she has visitors. Now, this is possible because in Germany, most houses are heated with radiators and those can be turned off and on individually. So people can easily just turn off the heat for single rooms that aren't used as much, which here in the US with the central air system wouldn't really be possible, for example. My parents keep them off in my and my brother's old bedroom, for example, and they just generally turn down their average room temperature by one to two degrees, which is something that a lot of people are doing. And they're also making sure that all of their outdoor shutters are closed at night to keep in the warm air. Those are pretty common in Germany. And things like taking long baths are pretty much considered luxury these days and possibly even inconsiderate. So I think just by those few examples, you can tell that this topic is very present in Germany right now. And of course, there's also some official guidance for saving energy. In July, the EU countries agreed on lowering their gas usage by about 15% compared to their average usage of the previous five years. And Germany specifically is aiming for a 20% reduction, which if we can reach this would guarantee enough gas for the winter. Germany did pretty well in August when they saved 28% of gas compared to previous years, but in September they only saved about 7.4%, so not enough. Other European countries are doing a lot better with this, like Sweden, where they saved over 50% gas in both of these months, and in the Netherlands it was about 30%. The entire European Union was able to save 14% in August and 15% in September. And the German government, as well as experts all over the media, have also been sharing countless tips on how to save energy such as replace all light bulbs with LEDs, use motion detectors or timers to make sure that the light is only on when it's actually needed, lower your average room temperature, what my parents did, make sure your radiator is blocked by anything, close your blinds and shutters, use dishwashers efficiently instead of washing dishes by hand, install energy saving shower heads and faucets, wash your hands with cold water, use potlets when cooking, turn electric stoves off early and then use the leftover heat, use the air circulation setting on your oven, avoid preheating if possible, wash your laundry on colder settings, and so on. On September 1st, Germany even had a law go into effect called Energie Einsparverordnung, which regulates that public buildings should only be heated to up to 90 degrees Celsius, hallways and foyers shouldn't be heated at all, and the outside of buildings shouldn't be lit up at night anymore if it's just for aesthetic reasons, which includes sightseeing attractions. Shop windows can't be lit up anymore between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., shop doors can't be kept open permanently, and even advertisement screens are being turned off in some places. The big water fountain in downtown Hamburg has been turned off early for the season, the cathedral in Cologne isn't lit up at night anymore, and even the dome of the Reichstagsbuilding in Berlin won't be lit up at night. I even heard that some stores have decided to turn off their escalators. In addition to these restrictions, the government has also taken steps to help its residents. In September, they've given a 300 euro bonus to all taxpayers, called Energiepauschale, and they're also taking over the December gas bill for households and businesses that are heating with gas and that are using up to 1.5 million kilowatt hours per year. And they recently decided on a gas price bremse, a gas price break or gas price cap, as well as a Strompreis bremse, electricity price cap. This means that for private households and small businesses, the price for one kilowatt hour of gas will be capped at 12 cents for the first 80% of their normal usage. If you use more, you'll have to pay the higher price for the rest of it. If if you use less, you'll even get a bonus. This was supposed to start in March of 2023, but since a lot of heating will have to take place before that, there have been some complaints and now it's supposed to start in February and last through April of 2024. The electricity price cap will start in January and will set the price per kilowatt hour to a maximum of 40 cents for the first 80%. In addition to these two measures, there will also be a gas price cap for big businesses and they're planning a 
Kerze Fonds, a fund to support those who are struggling the most, as well as people who heat with oil or wood pallets. So these measures are obviously supposed to lower energy costs, but also help slow down inflation. Meanwhile, a previously planned gas umlage, where consumers would have had to pay an extra fee to make up for the big losses that gas providers have suffered from, was canceled at the end of September. From June to August of this year, Germany also had a so-called Tankrabatt, a fuel discount, where people got a 35 cent discount on every liter of gasoline and 17 cents on diesel, but many people criticized that this didn't really have a big effect at all because fuel companies didn't fully pass the discounts on to the consumers. Another project that took place throughout the same three-month period and that was perceived much more positively was the so-called 9 euro ticket, the 9 euro ticket, which let people use public transportation throughout all of Germany for only 9 euros a month. This project was so popular that it even resulted in a long-term successor, the so-called Deutschland ticket for 49 euros a month that is supposed to come out on January 1st. One issue that has been very controversial is Germany's exit from nuclear power that was planned for the end of 2022. But because of the energy crisis, the three remaining nuclear plants are now supposed to stay on through April 2023, even though some say that because of how nuclear power plants operate and how electricity from gas is produced, this isn't actually going to help replace the gas a whole lot. The same is happening with some coal power plants that are kept in the system longer than planned or are even being revived. Okay, that was a lot. Even though, believe me, this was already a summary and there are so many more factors, connections and details to all of this. But at the end, this leaves us with one question. How is this going to play out in the long run? What are the predictions for the next few months and years? Now, this point will be relatively short because Nobody really knows, of course, especially not me. The only thing that I think is for sure is that Germany is trying to become independent from Russia long term. How and if this will work, we'll see. Right now, Germany is getting more gas via pipelines from Norway, the Netherlands, Belgium and even France. And we're also working on building our own terminals for liquefied natural gas to be able to receive shipments from the US, for example, but also from more controversial countries such as Qatar or the United Arab Emirates. The European Union is also looking into finding new trading partners such as Azerbaijan. Now, from what I've read, some people are saying that this crisis is going to lead to an even earlier clean energy revolution, which would actually be a nice side effect. Some are saying that the real challenge is going to be next winter, when Germany will most likely have to handle the same situation, but without any imports from Russia. And as a consequence, this could then lead to German goods being less competitive on the international market. What do you think how this is going to play out? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're in Germany or in Europe in general and are directly affected by this, I encourage you to share your story in the comments as well. I haven't found a whole lot of firsthand stories in English speaking media, and I'm sure it would help people from other places understand the situation a little bit better. Last but not least, if you would like to correct anything I said or add anything, please feel free to do so. I did summarize everything to the best of my knowledge, but as I said, this is a very complex topic, so mistakes can happen. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this helped a little to grasp the situation in Germany a little bit better. If you want to, you can leave me a tip via the super thanks button underneath this video or go to ko-fi.com or patreon.com. Thank you for that and I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss!